welcome to the Zia Wool Studio Buzz podcast. My name is Doc and I am coming to you from Albuquerque in New Mexico in the beautiful desert of the Southwest. This is a podcast about all the yarny things. <laughs> and today I have a new colorway. I have some finished objects, some wonderful bright ideas and um, yeah that's what I want to share with you. You may remember from last time if you've been around that I have made a crochet bag for my daughter and the bag is done and I this is the last bit of yarn that is left over from that project and she loves her bag and we just got back from taking her back to San Diego where she's in college and we um, dropped her off and on the way back spent a few days in Tucson in Arizona but yeah she of course she had to take her new bag and she loves it and she but I did a little, I took a little video of her with her bag. And um, so, yeah, so you can see how it looks like. I love how it turned out and she loves how it turned out. So that was a success story. Yeah. The other item that I finished was will be a gift for a friend. So if your name starts with an R and you live in Canada, you need to go take a break, go to the bathroom, fix yourself a cup of tea and come back like in five minutes or so. <laughs> I will send this off in the next days, but um, everybody else can see, of course. <laughs> That's funny. I have made a pair of Duke City mitts with these two yarns, Silk Hair and Lana Grossa and Pink Adobe Dye Works in a DK weight which I purchased in Taos at the yarn store, Mooncat Fibers. And these are the two yarns and I held them together. And this is what I made. I don't always add a purl row at the end of the thumb and the hand stitches here, but I decided to do it in this case because I wanted them to stay long and to not roll back. Normally it doesn't bother me, but I thought in this case, I want the recipient not having to deal with this. And I just love how this turned out. The silk hair, is incredibly soft. If you can get your hands on it, maybe it compares to Rowan, that mohair silk that Rowan has, but yeah, it's really very, very soft and very, very warm. I mean, as warm as it gets for fingerless mitts. And I made them from my own free pattern on Ravelry, the Duke City Mitts. And this pair was done with 4.5 millimeter needles. And I used, um, I always use DPNs, so four times eight stitches. And then the thumb has always ends up with four times eight 
divided by 2. So it's 16 minus 1. And so half of the total stitch count minus 1, that's the stitch count for the thumb. And of course, then you add two more stitches, which you cast on in this section, and then you, um, but you decrease those two stitches again to make a nice shaped thumb. Okay, you can come back now. <laughs> That's, I don't know how, how people do it who are not supposed to see what's being presented on the podcast. I mean, you have to scroll forward somehow. Nah, whatever. She'll figure it out. She's a smart girl. I also wanted to tell you something about the sweater that I am wearing. This is Zia Wool's Dream Catcher, my uh, two-ply sock yarn, fingering sock yarn. And I made the sweater with three millimeter needles and it was my own design. I wanted a generous neckline something that I like. If I get cold, I put on a shawl. I have a lot of shawls. Don't we all? We are knitters, right? And I also came up with that uh, lace pattern. I, yeah, I designed the lace pattern. I love how the sweater turned out. I hope you can see Pull up my pants. And the, I was so lucky that I found a super matching uh, sleeveless shirt that goes so well underneath. Perfect length. And I made it with three millimeter needles. Would I do that again? No, because my last sweater, the Yellow Brick Rodeo, was done with the same yarn, but 3.5 millimeter needles, and it's fine. It doesn't need to be, I, I don't, didn't want it to be too loosey-goosey, but it's not, that one is not loosey-goosey. I mean, this one most certainly is not, but 3.5 millimeter needles would be fine. I had, a bit of a problem. I had too many sleeve stitches. I did not have the width of the sweater when I wanted to split off the sleeves. Um, if I count my stitches for the sleeves and I measure those, and when at the point where I'm like, oh, this is what I want for my sleeves, it was still too tight here. So I had to keep on knitting. And then I got a sleeve that was wider than, uh, than I wanted. I like my sleeves to be tight. And so I did something that I've been doing several times. I made a little... I worked a little triangle here. I hope you can tell. It is a quick decrease of stitches that brings me to a better amount of stitches. And then I do my regular decreases here. Very happy with how that turned out. Yeah, I did have a problem. I never showed this on the podcast because then my mother got sick and I didn't podcast for so long. And then I think it was summer. And so I just forgot about it because another problem I had was that here on the sleeve, I think probably like six inches or so, I was down here, but here I found a mistake. So what I ended up doing was I dropped the stitches only for the lace and I knitted back up only the lace section and it worked out just beautifully. I had never done that like that. Yep. I have to say that I did not, I haven't worn this sweater as much as I thought I would, even though I, I just overall, I love it. And um, I love the colorway, it's called Put Your Shades On and but 
it's so yeah I feel like I even see somewhere where I had a, a, a stitch marker in there and it's so sensitive you do see all the cat hair and all so I don't know I'm not yeah I wish it wasn't I could over dye it and make it a little bit darker that would be nice that would be more um, practical in everyday life hmm maybe I'll do that that's a good idea okay yeah and then on to other projects we had a lot of so we spent a lot of time in the car of course and I worked on my Mariechen. As you may recall, I had to rip back. My gauge was off and I calculated where and with what stitch count I want my sleeves. I'm using four millimeter needles, by the way, and Kenzie yarn. And I didn't trust my own calculations. What was I thinking? And I made my sleeve wider and thus the body wider and thus everything got bigger here and it was just not right. And I realized that when I was already down here or so after splitting for, for the sleeves. And I had to rip back. So I decided I'm just gonna make it fit me right. And I went back to the stitch count that I had calculated and it was, it's perfect now. It's just perfect. And this is the Mariechen by Isabel Kramer. Isabel Kramer, I should say. She's German designer that I bet everybody out there knows and I'm just going to keep knitting. I think now it still needs maybe two more, two or three more pattern repeats before I can think of ending it on the bottom. But I also have to look at my pattern to see how much ribbing the designer suggests. I haven't done that yet. So I'm very excited that the end is near for this guy because I know I will love wearing this. This yarn is knitting up like a dream. It's extremely soft and just very cozy and wonderful. I know I'm going to enjoy this very much. I had nine balls of yarn and I have three more left. Each ball of yarn has, I believe, 50 grams. Did I say I have three left? I have four left. Where's the weight? Oh yeah, 50 grams. Can see. Wonderful yarn. And I know it comes in a lot of colors. If you need some yarn for a neutral project oh my gosh this is wonderful for a cardigan or something yeah and then i have also started the project that i told you i was gonna start which is a lace shawl sadly when i brought it on the trip i could not work on it in the evenings because I where we stayed in Tucson it was too too dark by the sofa that we had we had a, we rented a little cottage and it was lovely but that like I said the, the lighting was not good enough so I didn't continue working on it but I had started as planned um, and I know it will be really really gorgeous in this color the light blue i'm using 3.5 millimeter needles 
This is uh, Zia Wool's Desert Willow, a lace, one of my lace yarns. And I keep the pattern in this Knitter's Pride um, folder because there's a lot of charts. And I... You need to you do need to know that it's a free pattern on Ravelry by Denise Bartels and this is how it looks like isn't it absolutely stunningly gorgeous I am totally looking forward to this eventually <laughs> this will be slow progress we'll have to we're up we're soon going to go on another trip because we have to use a flight that would otherwise expire, which is not really, not too, too excited about this, even though I know I will enjoy what we're up to, but I wouldn't mind staying at home for a little bit now. But I don't think I will take this just because because of this past experience that I realize it's it's kind of I have need to have good conditions to be able to focus on lace and also in the car when it's eh, too shaky and all yeah. and you need a good setup for the chart so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna put that on hold for a little bit and I was done with the first chart and so it's easy for me to find my place in the in the in, in in the charts within the charts i also have my brother's sweater and i did start off with a pattern but by now it's so heavily modified that i cannot even i don't even want to tell you the pattern anymore this is called the oh man every time i look at it i'm thinking now the the neckline is too tight i can't believe it if i have to rip this back again i'm gonna freak out <laughs> seriously <laughs> oh, i think i even put it on my head already yeah oh man i don't know i really don't know i may have to rip this back again Okay, whatever. Let me tell you what it is. So I made a lot of changes. At first, I did not want this too tight on the neck because it's German machine washable or European machine washable sock yarn. So it's not really super soft. My first try, the neckline was too big. And I, I, I at some point, I totally left the the originally chosen sweater instructions the i think it's called the snow drifter but i didn't like something about it and so i made up my own stitch count and all with not necessarily a good result <laughs> i so the first try it was too big for a guy you don't want like a giant neckline this time now i'm thinking it's too tight okay i have to really think about this some more and i really actually may rip back because the story is this i used four millimeter needles for the neckline and then i changed to four millimeter 4.5 millimeters for the stockinette section. And in case you wonder what that is on my finger, it is number 24 off the Diamine ink vent because I thought my cartridge converter was empty and I wanted to fill that last bit of ink into it. You're gonna laugh. So it's, it's like a cartridge, right? The cartridge converter, whatever. And I used a syringe to get the last bit out of the, the ink vial. It was so little that I thought I, I'm gonna do it with a syringe. It's gonna be easier. So I did that. 
I put the syringe into the cartridge converter, which I thought was empty, but alas, it was not empty. So what happened as soon as I, I still can see it slow motion in my head when I closed my eyes, I put the syringe in, I squeezed to get that drop, the few drops of ink into the cartridge converter. And it's a small, tiny, tiny, tiny opening and a thin cartridge converter. I squeeze the syringe and I, so I held the converter with my left hand and I see that because apparently it was not, it was not empty because it got overfilled. What happened when you overfill something, you get a fountain, a volcano of ink. So I held it and there was this one giant drop of ink that flew up in the air, probably like this high. I'm not lying. I'm not making this up. Squeeze, drop, volcano, ink volcano, and on my hand. My husband later said, why don't you wash your hands? I'm like, dude, I've washed my hands many times. It just does not come off. Sometimes I think it's more, it's even hard, it sticks even more than dyes, yarn dyes. What the heck? Okay, whatever. It is what it is. It makes me laugh. It's just really funny. Okay, so back to the sweater for my brother. I am using two yarns held together. Two sock yarns, like I said, the, the, the European kind, uh, because they're machine washable. And I just want him to be able to throw it into the wash um, washing machine without having to worry about any kind of felting. And that will work just fine. Um, yeah, but... So here's the butt. I am really enjoying this extremely because I'm using leftover yarns. And this is a special project because I'm using yarn that was left from the socks that our mother made. So it's going to be very meaningful. And also because I'm using, it's kind of like the way our mother was, very frugal and kind of making something out of nothing type of woman. Um, and, but he's more of a green guy, even though he has blue eyes also. He's in general, I would say his, in, in his clothes, he tends to go more like green, like the ribbing here. And also I have another section here where I'm sure he would like that. Um, he won't mind blue. Sneeze attack. So he won't mind the blue, but I'm now I'm really reconsidering that neckline. And I'm if I rip back really another time, which I did once already, then I think I will not leave that giant block of blue in there. Even though it doesn't bother me, it looks like it's on purpose, like a, just a stripe of more blue stuff, but I think I would take that out or make it like less bam. But in the meantime, I will not progress with this because one of my German podcasting friends, I, she, put in her podcast, she said that, oh, I just sorted all my sock yarn leftovers. And she's a big time sock knitter. And I sent her a comment and I said, so, well, too bad you're not closer. Or I would see if you have some green, greenish leftovers. And I would ask you for those. I knew you, she wouldn't mind. She responded immediately. She sent me a message. She said, what do you want? What is this? What do you need? I'll be happy to send you some. So 
and she did. She packed up a package for me with greenish German European sock yarn leftovers and it's on the way somewhere. So this is on hold until I get, I get her package. Yeah, very exciting. But what do you do when you can't continue with this but you're enjoying it so very, very much? It's your brother and you need a matching one to honor your mother. I have only one brother, by the way, in case you wonder. And so I started this. <laughs> and I just put it on a needle that is too long because I didn't have anything else, but I wanted to show you. I am telling you, I am having so incredibly much fun but there's again another but <laughs> because I thought well for myself I will use hand dyed yarns because I won't mind hand washing so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna hand dye I'm gonna use hand dyed for mine for my version and that's what I'm doing And I changed uh, the stitch count for the neckline and I got this far and then I thought, I mean, obviously you see how far I got. <laughs> but then I thought, man, this is really a shame because I mean, it's gorgeous and all, but I feel like the individual hand-dyed hand yarns don't get to shine the way they, they deserve. Um, and let me take a step back. I wanted to tell you that I, I have a lot of sock yarn, hand-dyed sock yarn leftovers, and it is, or mini skeins, because I did a lot of swaps way back when that um, sock memory blanket uh, was such a big thing. I did a lot of swaps with, um, with other knitters, and I did, um, and I also purchased from Bohemia Fibers. It was a thing on Ravelry, she was amazing. She died. You would create a group and when it was full, it was full. And I know that Vicky, you were, you, I have one of your yarns in there too, because what you did was you submitted a picture that fitted a certain theme like one was all the beautiful things and then you would um she would dye yarn that would match your photo and you could add an add an extra full skein but normally she would just split up your yarn into mini skeins as well as everybody else's submitted uh, uh, the yarns dyed from a submitted photo that fitted that theme and so i would get what i would usually do is i would get all the mini skeins but also one full skein i would get like say there were 10 people in that group and then she would do 10 gram minis, but I know she's done some where she did five grams. I did, I participated in one of those also. So there were five gram minis, um, probably with 20 people. I mean, so much work, I cannot even imagine. And she was so good at this, incredible. I wonder what happened to her. I wish she would still do this. Maybe I contact her. So I have those minis and I have the minis from Swaps and I keep them like this. I kept them sorted by person and um, they're all labeled. And so I put it, when I put it in my, um, in the sock memory blanket, I would write down the name 
off the person who I swapped with and the yarn name, of course. So I could, um, yeah, I would know even a long time from knitting it because then I would say, oh, maybe what is this square? I love this so much. This is my favorite. And I could look it up. Yes. Now for, for this, I actually, yeah, I kept thinking, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And then all of a sudden I had this idea, well, I have, I still have all these minis of blues and greens. And long story short, bam. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so incredibly in love with this. I have made up all these stitch counts and pattern. I mean, like the way the neck is shaped with the ne neck being in higher in the back and with short rows shaped in the front. Not like here, but all in one. But um, I just really, really, really love it. And it's so much fun you, to pick the next color. And I sorted through all my minis and I kind of picked the color scheme. This is not gonna go in and maybe not even this, but I'm gonna leave it in for now. I think it may be too dark. And Oh, I didn't show you yet that I also have this. I once had, a few years ago, I had a an advent calendar, a yarn advent calendar with all the sock yarns that um, I kept in there. And occasionally I have also purchased mini skeins like this one I bought from a backyard fiber works a few years ago that was in Maryland. Yes, so here's my thought. I think the hand, this is kind of like really a waste of hand dyed yarns. And so this will be ripped back completely. And then I will do it again like this because this is my winter of sweaters i'm kind of a little bit craving sweaters you know i have that shawl by melanie berg on the needles and i haven't touched it in forever <laughs> and now again so many garments on the needles yes so I, I go by a color scheme of this one being blues and greens with added pops of color and kind of like a similar in, hmm, I want to say similar, similar in value, but then there are these stronger flashes in there, which don't bother me. I think that looks great and it adds visual interest. But here I need to tell you if you want to start doing something similar. So here I, well, well, let's start off like this. Up here I used five gram minis. Great. Here I used a 10 gram minis. I used it all up and I did not like it. Oh, here it's a little easier to see. So I had a fairly light stripe that was fairly wide and I said that this needs to go. So I really, I, I ripped back because I didn't like it. I, yes, so now I determined I want four rounds per colorway max 
unless it doesn't bother me. If it's a very variegated yarn, it won't bother me as much, but here this one stood out way too much. Yeah, and here are my, oh, I think I showed you these already. Yeah, that's my blues, but I may not have shown you my pinks. And I say pinks, even though there is pink in here, there is yellow and orange, but the main focus is green and blue. Whereas this one, the main focus was purple. No, not purple, pink. And so I gathered stuff in this box. No, it's not falling, that's good. And I, yeah, there's, yeah, just, I'm looking forward to re-knitting this without the yarn being doubled. I mean, I'm not saying this is not beautiful because it is beautiful, but it's kind of a waste of hand dyed. And which means, since I still need to have that matching sweater with my brother, I can use up all the European sock yarn girly colors that I still have which are also all leftovers from my mother or from me. And I'm looking forward to doing that. I'm not sure what I will take on the trip when I go soon, because I feel like I need to supplement this guy with a few more colors. And I dug up these micro minis but they won't all fit this may all be my sugar loaf i think i found this baggy bundle but sugar loaf may be too a little bit too thin i don't know i'll see i have i have a few more days to decide what i'm gonna do but now you've seen all the no good that i was up to which is so much fun i'm so in love with all of these crazy colorful sweaters i'm super duper happy and i um wanted to show you this which i'm probably gonna turn into mini skeins i showed you this colorway last time because it went into a kit and i um thank you you know who you are who bought the kit for the uh, birds of a feather shawl and um i but I dyed this up on my Dreamcatcher two-ply base. It's kind of like a sock yarn, but of course, super duper soft. And um, in April, I will finally have a booth again at a at a um, at an event at Albuquerque Fiber Arts Fiesta. Very excited about this, but I decided I'm not going to put anything in the shop anymore until then in, into the online shop i mean there's a lot of yarns in the etsy shop right now that i have added recently and if you need if you want any yarn or you saw something in the last episode that you liked the shop is stocked and this one but this one will not be added so if you say whoa i love this i want this you need to contact me by email and the first people that do that they um, can have this without it being listed in the Etsy shop. It will go for $30 shipped in the US and for $40 shipped to, um, let's say, Europe, Germany, Austria, blah, blah. Yeah. I love this colorway. Bird song on Dreamcatcher. And this is it. You know, I've had other plans for a cardigan for my daughter, which is currently on hold and possibly another sweater or a cardigan for myself. 
not happening right now but um yeah because i'm so in love with these mini skein sweater projects so it will be a while before i go back to those but for now i feel like i'm forgetting something but i can't think of what it was so i'm just gonna say my goodbyes i hope you are all well and i thank you for watching and i'll see you again in a while happy knitting Thank you.